My Sterling single, soldering the piping, testing the axle driven pump, and a steam test on the bench. In case you're wondering what part of the engine this is, it's not part of the engine, it's the underside of the tender, and it lives on my dining room table, for the moment anyway. I'm showing the position of the pressure feed from the hand pump. And the hand pump pressure feed on the tender needs to correspond to the pressure feed fitted to the distribution panel. I had it at the end originally, but it's better being further inboard. It's time to get down to some serious soldering business. First of all, I need to remove the panel. Normally, I would silver solder all copper piping on a steam locomotive, but this is the exception to the rule. I soft soldered this one. This is one of the injector water pipes. It's always full of cold water and it never gets warm. The pipe at the other side, which is the main feed to the axle driven pump, had already been soft soldered. So here I'm just cleaning it up to re soft solder it to the union at the other side. And as you've just seen, I've shortened the pipe using a cutting disc on my Proxon motor tool. In this clip, the pipe is coated with soft solder flux. I'm placing the fitting on the end of the pipe, but so that it's straight, it needs supporting. These are very useful things to have in the workshop for holding small components. Now it's soldering time. I'm just using the very small blowtorch for this because soft soldering doesn't require that much heat. The pipe is quite a slack fit in the hole, which is odd because the hole is 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. But from a soldering point of view, that's not a bad thing because it will give a larger surface area for the solder to bond to. Once the part had thoroughly cooled, I removed the crocodile clip unit and now it's ready to attach to the plate. This next piece of pipe is for the hand pump pressure feed and because this pipe connects directly to one of the boiler clack valves, I'm going to silver solder it. I also silver soldered the other end to the fitting that I made. And here's a view of the piping so far. Very shortly I'm going to turn the engine round and pipe the other injector. I'm not going to video that part of the job though because it's almost identical to piping the injector that you've seen me already do. Time to fit the water gauge and this tool that I'm brandishing is a glass cutter. All you do is run the cutter on this tool around the glass tube and then snap it off. And here I'm just doing a test fit of the glass tube in the water gauge to make sure it's the correct length. And it is. All I have to do now is fit the silicone rubber o-rings into these two nuts, one at the top and one at the bottom, as well as fitting the front plug and the top plug. These three cock water gauges are superb, and I buy them where I buy most of my parts from Blackgates Engineering. Blackgates Engineering don't have an online shop, but all you have to do is email matt, that's M-A-T, at blackgates.co.uk. These really are superb gauges. Both the top cap and the small blanking plug at the front are fitted with very small silicone o-rings. And even better, the top and bottom parts of the water gauge are machined from phosphor bronze. And the cock valves don't leak. It's time now to see whether the axle driven pump works, and as you can see, it definitely works. For every revolution of the wheels, a small squirt of water comes down the bypass pipe. When I shut the bypass valve, the water output from the axle driven pump is fed into the boiler. This part of the video is edited. It took quite a while before the water appeared in the water gauge and I stopped the engine when it got to this level. Even though this engine has been steamed in the past, I'm about to steam it for the first time. And it's going to take a while because this is the fire. It's a very small gas burner that I bought on eBay. But it's no problem. I can sit back and look at the engine and plan out what I'm going to do to it after this. And after a while, the pressure starts to rise, very slowly, may I add. But with next to nothing showing on the gauge, I open the regulator and look what happened. Because the steam pressure is incredibly low, the temperature of the steam is also low, and I prematurely closed the drain cocks and it started to knock so I open the drain cocks again. And as you can see, there's a lot of water coming out of the drain cocks. As the gas evaporates in the canister that's supplying the burner, the canister gets very cold. So I've routed the blowdown valve from the water gauge via a pipe into the plastic container behind the engine which is holding the gas tank. 
This helps to prevent the tank from chilling and keeps the pressure up. Apart from a slight leak on the piston gland which needs adjusting, that is the only leak. Time for a break I think, just to oil up the engine. This is a special attachment for my oil can, it's just a long piece of copper pipe with a piece of silicone rubber tubing on the end just in case you poke yourself in the eye with it. A bit of health and safety advice so you don't end up looking like a pirate. That's about it from me, before I go though I'd just like to say at this moment in time when you see the engine running the axle pump is pumping water into the boiler to maintain the level. And how it's managing to do this with such a small fire, I don't know. I've got a feeling this engine is going to steam really well when I run it on coal. That's enough talking from me. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.